Welcome to this new how-to. In this how-to, we're going to look at the data connection. The data connection can be found in the options menu. Then go to general. And there you will find the data piece on the left side. In the data section, several options are available. One of them is to use the online functionality. Keep in mind that this will use your internet connectivity, so it will use also the bandwidth, etc., to uh, make, I would say, connections, download data, depending on the other options selected. So if you switch this option off, then you see that all the other options also can't be used. So you need to switch on the online functionality, and based on that, you can. Uh, I would say decide to switch on, for example, uh, use the Bing Data World graphics. You can switch it off or switch it on. If you switch it off, then also the photogrammetry option is switched off. So keep that in mind. Uh, based on some, some testing, uh, this piece, the Bing Data, with the photogrammetry uh, mode uh, will cost you a lot of data. Uh, as you see already, I've played it for a few days now after installing the latest patch and after playing around with the setting. And I'm now at uh, 4.6 uh, gigabytes already being used. Uh, since I don't have a cap for my uh, ISP, I've got uh, no limitation uh, configured. If you have, I would say, a hard data cap, then make sure that you switch on the option here and uh, switch on the, the gigabyte which you want to burn on a flight simulator. Uh, for now I'll leave it off because again I don't have the, the data cap so I don't have to worry. So the data tracking reset day is the day where it resets the uh, data limits uh, to zero again. It's just like with your mobile phone, right? It's mostly you set it on the start of the month. In this case, I'm resetting it on the first day of the month, uh, which is the 1st of December in this case. Um, if you configure the date limitation, then you can also set certain warnings, so that in case if you're reaching the warning limit, um, you will be, uh, I would say, pre-warned and you can switch off the online options. The bandwidth. Uh, the bandwidth is another option. Um, if you've got, I would say, restrict bandwidth, for example, you've got a, I don't know, 20 megabit connection and you're sharing it with uh, several other people in your home, then you might want to set a hard cap, for example, on, uh, well, let's say if you've got a maximum of 20, uh, 20 megabit, then you could set it to five megabit. Uh, other options are uh, 40 and unlimited. So I've set it to unlimited, which means I'm um, using unlimited bandwidth, so all the bandwidth which is available. And then we're coming to the rolling cache settings. And the rolling cache settings uh, help you storing certain data in the cache on your local machine. Uh, so that's, of course, used for quicker access. Uh, by default, the limit is set to uh, 8 gigabytes, and it's stored in the uh, caching directory. If you See, hope you can see it. It's in the app data, local packages, Microsoft Flight Simulator, then the uh, 8WE uh, Kilo, etc. And then in the local cache folder, there it will store the cache also for the data piece. If you want, you can clear the cache by pressing the delete option, then we'll clear the cache file. But you can also configure a manual cache. So let's look at that option now. So if you press view, you will come to a nice uh, overview. I'll give it some, some time to load the map. And here it says, okay, hey, where's the uh, cache location and how much bandwidth do you want to assign to your manual cache file? So in this case, I created it uh, for 50 uh, gigabyte. Uh, take into account that if you set it or if you want to change it, it will take some time to create or modify the file. And once you've done that, you will see that the cached regions option is available. Uh, you can press the option uh, new cache region and you can create a cache. And by doing that, you will it will, I would say, pre-download the data. 
so it doesn't download it on the fly uh, if needed when uh, using Flight Simulator. And there are a few options like uh, left mouse button, you can pan, right? So you can pan uh, and go, go to the map. And then you've got the uh, right mouse button, which paints it. And you can see that uh, depending on the, uh, let's say color, for example, I'll put it here and here. Depending on the color of the, uh, I would say it's almost a vector vector sized uh, graphic. It's either a high quality, medium or low. So the higher the quality, of course, the more uh, details you will see. Uh, so you can, I can hold the shift button also to, uh, and then press the uh, right button or yeah, right button, sorry to paint. And you can also remove it, right? So you can press the controls uh, in the center and then you will remove uh, the certain data pieces. So once you're done, you can press finish and download and it will pre-download the data of the map pieces which we selected. If you're not satisfied, then click on the reset button which will reset it and you can start uh, painting again. So here ends this, I would say, short tutorial about how to use the data connection piece in uh, Flight Simulator 2020. So as we've seen, you can either uh, configure a manual cache or you can use the automatic cache. You can have several options to switch on and off. Uh, Few options which we don't cover, but those are, I would say, pretty uh, well described are the live real world traffic, uh, which shows the live air traffic services, uh, the live weather, and of course, the multiplayer, where you can see the other players uh, playing flight simulator around the world. Um, so here ends this tutorial again. I <laughs> uh, hope you liked it. If you like it, then press the like button. Uh, if you've got questions or comments, then use the comment boxes below the video. And if you'd like to see more of these how-tos or more interest in the other how-tos, then consider to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks for watching and see you next time.